I'm sure all of you remember your first apartment, right? The first time that you had moved out and are living on your own. Uh, and I remember mine. I was a little, you know, little rat shack over off Mockingbird Lane. And, uh, and I remember going to bed that night and there was, of course, you know, a living room full of half done Ikea furniture that I just didn't have any more energy to put together. But that first night, when you're on your own, it's like you don't really want to put everything away. You don't want to turn out the light, but there's time just to go to bed and accept the fact that you're on your own this time. Now, it can be scary. It can also be very exciting, right? How can it be scary? Well, I think about the times that we're alone with God. When we had Maundy Thursday, we have that period, three days where we know that God is no longer there. And there's a point, there's, there's that end of the Maundy Thursday service where we don't really end it, do we? After communion, light, we, don't, we don't say our normal prayer. We don't use our normal blessing. We don't process out. What do we do? The lights kind of just go out. We strip the altar. We move things over there. And then next day, Good Friday, of course, there's nothing in here. I mean, everything is gone, right? Tabern the Ombre Tabernacle is empty. And we're left alone. That's one way of feeling alone like that. And right here, right where we are now, is another way of that, of feeling that way. On Thursday, we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension. Forty days after the resurrection, Jesus is taken up into heaven. Now, whatever the physics of that are, I'm not sure that's really important. The fact is, the disciples, the apostles are staring up into heaven. Like, what's happening? What are we supposed to do now? And at some point, you've got to wonder when they decided to come back from the Mount of Olives and say, enough is enough. It's time to go home now. It's time to acknowledge we're here, we're by ourselves. And naturally, the question comes up, where is God with us? It's kind of like way then, like waking up that next day, wondering if it had been a dream. The apostles wondering if it had been a dream. We wake up the next day, the furniture that's half put together is still there waiting for us to finish. We realize that we probably should have paid a little more attention when we watched our parents shop for groceries so that there would be cereal and milk ready for us. Things we've forgotten, things we need to learn to do, and things we need to rely on, right? All of the things that our moms and dads taught us to get us ready, well, now we have to use them. And there's that period of panic where we don't remember any of it, right? We wonder how we're going to make it alive until the next day. Because we have exactly that much skill. But we do, don't we? We do make it to the next day. The furniture gets put together. And we go on. And we do our lives the best that we can. In much the same way. As we do in this period. After Jesus has taught us. Everything he has to teach us. And now we are here and we have to do it. The cereal and the milk and the groceries and the furniture are the least of our problems. When we think about all the things that Jesus taught us to do that now we have to remember how to do. It just doesn't work for us any other way. 
There's a little bit of panic. There's a little bit of wondering where God is. And this week, there's a lot, especially this week, there's a lot of wondering where God is. I'm not going to go off into that because it's, 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 it's still, for me, thinking about the events of this week in Uvalde are still too raw to say everything I need to about that. But there is a wondering of where God is. And that period that lasted between those ten days, between the last time the apostles saw Jesus go up into that cloud and the day that Peter wakes up on Pentecost morning and it is now time to speak, to say the things that Jesus taught us to do, to do the things that Jesus taught us to do, and to be the church that Jesus taught us to be. And now we fast forward in today's reading, this lesson from Acts. Now Jesus has said, yes, where you're going, where I am going, you cannot follow. But here we are. Here is Paul. How Paul got himself put in jail is an interesting and fun story in itself, right? Anytime, you're always having fun on your way to going to jail, right? But... <laughs> Here Paul is. Paul in jail. The wind comes. The doors get blown open. And what is Paul's choice? Now clearly, he can walk out anytime he wants. But what does he do instead? He calls out to the jailer says, Don't harm yourself because the jailer is in trouble now, right? We are all still here. And this is what Jesus taught me how to say. This is what Jesus taught me how to do. And this is who Jesus taught me how to be. It's like Paul has woken up in that apartment. And knows that now all of those things that he's been taught to do. It's now time to do them. It is where we stand. Right here in this in-between time, between ascension, when Jesus has finished teaching us everything he has to teach us. Whether we have learned it or not remains to be seen. And then the time to wake up and to do those things. Not because we're being graded on it on a pass-fail basis, right? Right? But because this is how, this is what we've been looking forward to our whole lives, right? All of the time growing up, looking forward, when I grow up, I'm going to, and then you fill in the blank, all of the things that you were going to do, now is the time to do those things. It's time for us to do that as a church. Time for us to do that as disciples. Telling our stories. Who Jesus has been for us. What Jesus does for us. And who Jesus is wanting us to be. We don't keep it a secret. We actually proclaim it. Thought, word, and deed, right? The, all of those things are the things that we do. So, in this last week, almost like a getting, you know, it's kind of that, that period between your last exam and graduation, there's time to think about that. There's time to prepare. Because Pentecost comes, we receive the Holy Spirit, the church receives the Holy Spirit, and it is time for us to be that church. We call it after this period. You know, this is uh, one one more week week of the white. After this, we have red next week, and then we've got that long period where all you see is green vestments. 
It's a long stretch. And we don't even call it anything cool. We call it the propers. We call it even ordinary time. Because what is ordinary? Us being who Jesus taught us to be, doing the things Jesus taught us to do, and knowing the things Jesus wanted us to know. That's, that's how we get ready for Pentecost. That's how we get ready for all of the good things Jesus wants to break open to us, all the things God wants to do for us, with us, and through us in our ministry here. And so glory to God whose power working in us could do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. Amen. Amen.